Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Faithful Rattos and my name is Ashley. So, before we get into today's video, I'd just like to show you this. Now, as you may or may not know, I do have a video on my channel introducing my inverts. I actually lost them all. Um, not lost, they all died. Um, all the caterpillars died and I don't really know why, it was very sad. And then my orchid mantis, Marissa, she had a really, really severe mismalt and I couldn't get her out of it and so we had to um, have her pass away peacefully. And I put her in the freezer so that she would fall asleep and die. Um, and that happened in December and it was really sad because I was really hoping to raise her more than just a nymph. It was really sad and I had her in the freezer for a, a couple of months and then I sent her off to this company called Pinsect. I will link them in the description. And this is a lady called Kathy, and she pins and preserves insects um, and, and inverts. And so I sent Marissa to her, and Marissa came home recently. And this is what Marissa is in. So it's a resin heart with daisies, which are my favourite flowers. Um, and I think this is hawthorn, I think. Um, and some other pretty pink flowers and Marissa is right here in the middle. She did go through a pretty severe mismalt, which is why she looks a bit odd in this, but she is here, she's home and I'm just so happy to have her back and I just thought I'd let you know to see if anybody else had inverts in the UK that they wanted to be preserved that I would really really recommend Pinsect to do that. So on to today's video which is a interesting one. I'm going to react to this which is the Pets at Home Rat Care Guide and I've seen Emiology and other YouTubers make similar videos reacting to chain pet store guides and I'm not sure if Emiology has reacted to this guide or if it's been updated since she reacted to it um, but I was in Pets at Home um, because I had to take Akatosh the vet, he got neutered, I will be making a whole video about that. It's been a saga with that. And so there was a pet at home across the road and I went in to get some treats, uh, specifically the cat treats because my boys really love some cat treats from there. And I saw this obviously and this little ratty on the cover, this looks like my Perii. And um, so I picked it up and I picked it up to bring home to show it to my partner and then I thought it'd be really interesting to react to. So I will on the screen put the like page here so you can see it for yourself. But we're gonna react to this and see what the information is like. So this is the first page. An introducing in blah, blah, blah. an introduction to caring for rats. You want a new pet to be happy and so do we. Hmm, that's uh, questionable. So we've put together this guide to caring for rats. Handy if you already have rats or are thinking about getting them. Rats can make good family pets but may be suited to adults and older children as they're more active after dark when younger children may have gone to bed. As rats enjoy company, you should keep them in same-sex pairs or groups. Rats likely to live two to two and a half years, though some may live longer. Um, I would actually say that if you're getting rats from pets at home, they're going to live maybe one and a half to two years. Two, and a half, two to two and a half is like a really big stretch, especially for poor poorly bred rat and I would say that your rats will get used to your sort of living schedule. My rats are often awake in the daytime and that's because they're used to our schedule and that's perfectly natural. They are more active at dawn and dusk but in the summer dusk is quite early so there's no reason why that would be a reason not to get them for young children. I think for me mainly it's the fact that there's a lot of care responsibilities when it comes to rats and they have to be old enough to be handling them correctly and mature enough to be handling them correctly and that's like the biggest problem, I think. Did you know? Rats are very agile and can jump two feet or more. Yes, I did. I did know that, sadly, um, but that's a nice little fact. And then at the bottom it says, need more advice, go to rspca.org.uk slash rats. I don't really recommend that considering RSPCA partners with Pets at Home and is allowing poor care standards um, such as like cage sizes for other animals. So interesting. So these are the five pet welfare needs. A good home, your rat needs a suitable place to live. 
a healthy diet, the right food for a healthy balanced diet and fresh water on tap, ways to stay happy, the chance to do things like rats like to do, like climb, forage, run and explore, the right company, being with or away from other animals, help to be healthy, protection against pain, injury and suffering. Now these are the five things you're obligated to provide for any pet that you have, not just rats. So it has to have a suitable enclosure, it has to have a suitable diet, it has to have suitable enrichment, it has to be either with or alone, depending on the species or the animals, um, and obviously not with predator um, species and things like that, and help to be healthy, which means vet care. And these are legal requirements. You have to provide this to your pets. And if you don't, they can take your pets off you. And I just feel very uncomfortable of RSPCA, a supposed animal welfare char charity, pairing it with pets at home when the conditions that animals come from that are sold in these stores is horrific um so that's interesting home sweet home what's to do rats are active and love to play and explore add lots of tunnels ropes toys hammocks and ladders to explore and keep them busy they also love to dig tunnels and burrows these energetic intelligent pets need plenty of suitable activities to keep them stimulated fit and healthy as they can quickly become bored well, that's true but what what sort of, you know, it, it's just a bit vague. Best buddies, rats enjoy company. So we recommend you choose same sex pairs or groups. Ideally buy them together so you know they're already friends. However, new rats can sometimes be carefully introduced later. Provided lot, provide lots of space and hiding places so they can get away from each other if they want to. Check them daily to make sure they're getting on. If they start to fall out, you'll need to house them separately to prevent any injuries. This is concerning. For one, I always recommend starting with a trio. It's much more of a stable group dynamic and it prevents a lone rat situation. Number two, putting hiding spaces in enclosures where rats aren't getting along is a route to disaster because if they can't get out and they're in a fight, dangerous. And also, if you have to check them daily to make sure they're getting on and you don't just know if they're getting on, that's worrying. And also, house them separately to prevent injuries. Um, what about neutering? to solve the problem, perhaps. Pets at home. Dream bedtimes. Rats like nothing more than building their own nest. Include shelters where rats can build a comfy nest and snuggle down together in the dark. Pop in some paper tissues or dust-free dust soft hay that they can chew and shred. Do not use cotton wool for bedding or synthetic fibres which may get caught around limbs and cause blockages if eaten. Ideally, shelters should have two entrances so they can't be trapped inside or prevent another rat from entering. Some of these things are good and some of these things are bad. So, yep, give them nesting material, hay, newspaper, paper. Don't use cotton wool, fine. But they might cause blockages if eaten. Rats don't eat things that they're not supposed to eat, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but this is a good point about shelters having more than one entrance so that they can get in and out if, you know, things are going sour. Just the place. Position your cage out of direct sunlight and drafts. Keep away from radiators and electrical equipment. Try to keep it in the same place where the lights go on and off around the same time each night. Rats may be up at night and exercise a lot, so a bedroom may not be the best place for them, but it should be somewhere quiet where they can rest undisturbed away from other pets. Okay. So I personally find that my rats do very well in the living room, which is the centre of our household, because they love the attention. But that doesn't mean that rats who are living in a rat room or in a bedroom um, would do badly, but they don't need to be somewhere undisturbed. The only other thing that they got right is that they need to be away from other pets. Other pets keep them away, but they can be in um, well-used areas of the house and like busy areas of the house. They will cope just fine. Unlike some of the animals like mice or maybe hamsters that do need the quiet, rats don't really need the quiet, so you don't have to worry about that one. A happy home. Rats need lots of room, so a large cane designed especially for rats is a must. With lots of levels to give extra floor space to scamper and scurry about on, a hamster cage simply isn't big enough and won't do. It should have solid floor, as wire mesh floors can lead to foot problems, but the sides can be wire as rats love to climb. First of all, the sides have to be barred if a rat's enclosure is entirely like glass or plastic or something like that that's really bad for their respiratory systems because they produce a lot of ammonia it needs to be large it still doesn't say how large the minimum base size of the cage is probably somewhere around 80 by 50 centimeters and then as tall as you like 
Um, obviously, the size of the cage depends on how many rats can live comfortably in that, but there's absolutely no like indication of how big a rat cage needs to be in this. Good point about mesh floors, but if you're testing up correctly, you'll have a deep layer of substrate, so the mesh floors won't matter. And extra floors to scamper about on. Any extra floor space that is like on a level doesn't count as extra floor space. Floor space is unbroken floor space that they can use to run around on. And if it's in different levels, that's not extra floor space. Yes, it's an extra floor, but it's not extra floor space. And ideally for rats, you don't want lots of different levels that they can just walk about on. You want to keep the cage active so they can, you know, build muscles and build agility and having just lots of shells and lots of like, layers isn't a good idea for rats. Be cage proud. Clean your cage at least weekly with hot water and disinfectant that's safe for pets. Change their bedding but keep a little bit of the previous dry and soiled nesting back. Rats can find cleaning the cage stressful as it removes familiar scents. Putting some of their dry and soiled nesting back in can help them relax. Toilet areas will need cleaning daily so you might want to try a litter tray to make things easier. Cleaning is a job best done in the evening when your rats are naturally awake. I mean you don't if your setup is correct you shouldn't be cleaning your cage out weekly it's just not necessary i'm not going to clean out this deep of bedding every week i change it out maybe every five four to six weeks um depending on how messy they've been litter trays every couple of days that's correct fabric items once a week uh, but if you have a correct setup you don't need to clean it out every week and you shouldn't clean it out every week uh, because the more you clean, the more they scent mark, and the more they scent mark, the stinkier the cage gets, so the more you want to clean. But if you, like me, clean, you know, minimally, it's much better. And it is a good idea to put some of their scented bedding in, but you don't have to. Rats aren't as anxious about things like that as hamsters and mice are, so that one isn't, um, in my opinion anyway, too worrisome. Diet and dinner time. No leftovers. Remove any old and uneaten or stale food from the bowl before cleaning and refilling it. That's common sense. <laughs> okay, easy eating. Ceramic bowls are best for rats. They can't chew them. You can clean them easily and they're hard to knock over. Rats also like to forage for their food, so you should scatter food around the cage for them to find. Yes, you don't need to feed rats food in bowls. The only thing that I would put in a bowl is when I feed their wet their wet food a couple of times a week at most, just to keep it contained so it doesn't, you know, end up going gross all around the cage. But don't use bowl feeding for rats. That can cause um, rats to overeat. It can cause rats to get food aggression. And it's just not enriching. So ditch the bowls. Nutrient-rich nuggets. Now, we all know how I feel about nuggets. Let's see what Pets at Home feels about nuggets. To make sure rats get everything they need, we feed them Pets at Home rat nuggets, which are just terrible, terribly made things. These include all the vitamins and minerals they need in their diet and means they can't skip bits as they might with muesli mixes. It would be all well and good if people who made these silly little nuggets actually put in the correct nutrients that rats need instead of subpar ingredients and then you could actually say maybe that they'd get all that they need from these nuggets which they don't they're poorly sourced ingredients poor quality ingredients um and if you're feeding the correct amount of food they won't selective feed because there won't be enough food to selective feed from so that's a complete like non-starter in my opinion happy tummies as our rats are fed our pets at home food, we recommend that you do the same to prevent upset tummies from a diet change. If you want to change their food, do it steadily, introduce new foods over 10 days or so and phase out the old food completely. Rats don't need to be like slowly weaned over on food and definitely don't feed nuggets. You want to be feeding them a complete mix with supplements and occasional enrichment things like veg and wet food. But it's not really the case for rats with other animals. You can change their food pretty, pretty like quickly and they'll be fine. So don't worry about that one. Unfussy eaters. Rats love food and will happily munch on meat, plants and seeds, as well as rat nuggets. Occasionally try 
rat nuggets. I occasionally try small amounts of grain, cooked egg, cooked chicken, apples, broccoli, peanuts in their shells, and even dandelion leaves for a tasty change. So these are all things that rats can eat. Rats can eat most things that humans eat, so they can usually eat a little bit of any dinner that you have unless it's spicy obviously you don't want to be giving them too much of a spicy food but they can eat that my rats love curry um, especially butter chicken apparently but you don't want to overfeed the wet food and you don't want to overfeed human cooked food because that is very high in calories and it's really nice tasting so they'll eat a lot of it and they'll gain a lot of weight uh, but all of these things that they've mentioned are things that rats can eat. Rats can eat most vegetables if you want a proper list of things that they can't eat, um, because most things they can. Asami Rats has a great document page about that that you can find in my link tree in my bio. Ration treats. Rats love treats, but whether it's cooked egg or seeds, cooked chicken, apples or nuts, these should be given as part of their daily ration, not an addition to it. Also avoid feeding foods that are high in fat or sugar. Although rats do like these types of foods, that if they eat too much of them, it can lead to obesity and other health problems, which is true. Treats should be treats and make up less than 5% of their diet. Are rats the right pet for you? Shall we find out? We know getting a new pet can be an exciting time, but before you commit, why not take time to talk these questions through with your family? Who are the rats for? Do you think carefully about who will look after the rats? They're mainly active at night and will be waking up while young children go to bed, so it may not be the most suitable pets for families with the young children. If older children look after them, remember an adult will be responsible for ensuring they are cared for properly every day. This is very true. Parents who buy pets for their children should be aware that they are the ones legally responsible for caring for them. So if you as a parent aren't the one who is going to pick it up after your children, if they're not caring for their pets probably, properly, then don't get the pets. If you are not willing to do all of the responsibilities, don't get the pets. It's also your legal requirement to look after pets. Do I have enough space? You'll need room for a large cage indoors and away from other pets. You should be aware that rats could disturb light sleepers with their nighttime activity and need to be housed somewhere quiet. They can rest undisturbed as I mentioned before. It doesn't have to be a quiet area. I actually find that my rats love being in the probably the noisiest room in the house, the living room. Um, and at the night time, obviously it's quiet, so that's fine. But they do need to kept, be kept away from other pets, especially predator animals like cats and dogs and ferrets and things like that. And also away from birds because birds are very dusty, which is very bad for rats, respiratory systems. Can I afford rats? Rats aren't cheap pets. The cost of food, bedding, toys, holiday care, vet fees, Vet fees especially soon add up. Remember, rats are social species, should have at least two or more. And if they fall out, they need separate cages, toys and bedding. Yes, but you shouldn't be keeping rats separate forever. You need to deal with that problem. You need to get the aggressor neutered. You need to find out if it's some sort of other issue that's causing the aggression. Don't just keep them separately, but this is true. They aren't cheap. The cost of food, bedding, toys, vet fees especially, um, really do add up. Do I have the time? Feeding, cleaning, health checking and bonding with your rats are vital to your pet's well-being. You need to be done every day, usually in the evening when your pets are naturally awake. So that's, I mean, do you have the time to care for them is um, a pretty decent question to ask. Can I commit to looking after rats? The average rat lives for two to two and a half years, but could be longer. In that time, older children may leave home. Also think how how often you may go away on holiday. You'll care for your rats. Rats can be wonderful pets, but they need wonderful owners too. One thing I'll add to this is that if you're keeping rats correctly, you will have a rolling group and it's not just a two year commitment. It is an ongoing commitment forever. And if you aren't willing to commit for multiple years of ownership, don't get rats. Get an animal that is a single animal, like a hamster. Um, that way, when that pet dies, the obligation is gone. When your rats start to die, you need to find them friends. It is not acceptable to keep them on their own after one of the other one dies. They need to be constantly with company. So it's not just a two year commitment. It's much longer than that. And if you're not willing to commit to that long, don't get rats. Making friends. Although it's hard, hold back your excitement and give your rats plenty of time to get to know both you and their new home. Settling in. Moving house can be stressful for rats. Let them settle in for a few days before handling them. They may sneeze as they get used to the new home, but it should stop after a few days. If not, see your vet. Very good advice. Quite surprised. Meeting greet. Bonding with a rat takes time, so it will be a while before you can pick yours up. Start by gently talking to your pets as they 
know your voice, then place a hand in front of the far corner of the cage so they get used to your smell, then start stroking them, perhaps offering a treat. When your rat seems ready, gently scoop them up with both hands so they feel secure and supported. So what I will say is, if you're buying pets, any pets, and rats especially, from pets at home, they will be nervous. They will have never been handled really by humans and they will be very scared, especially after just moving in. My Hester, who is a confident leader of the group now, we didn't really see him for almost two months when we first got him and I made the mistake of getting them from pets at home. So this is very true. But if you have well-bred rats, they will want to be with you, have that connection from the first day. I saw that when I got my first breed of rats. Rats shouldn't need so much time to get used to you. If they come from a place that has bred them well, they don't need that extra time. But if you are getting rescues especially, or if you have made that mistake and got them from pet store, they will need a lot of time. And it can be months. Um, but I do recommend the confidence method when bonding with rats. So you can look that up on Asami Rats. I also have a video about bonding with rats if you want to see that. Feeling jumpy. Remember that rats can jump around two feet or even more. So if you take them out of the cage, hold them close to the floor or a surface so they won't be able to easily get away from you. Always supervise children with rats. That is correct. Looking good. A healthy rat is active and playful, has a shiny coat, bright eyes and a clean nose. Check your pet's skin for coat, skin and coat for signs of fleas and mites, such as bald patches or irritation. Very good. Next section. A healthy rat. All eyes. Keep an eye on rats when they're out of the cage. They naturally like to choose. They may find objects of unhealthy and unsuitable objects to gnaw upon. That is very true. Daily workouts. As well as ladders and platforms, add ropes and a rat wheel to the cage so rats can burn off even more energy. Why not try clicker training too? Rats are quick learners and eager to work for a favourite treat. Some owners have a separate playpen outside of their cage for the rats to exercise in. Move them there in the evening when they're most active. The only thing I would say is a rat wheel needs to be at minimum 12 inches in diameter and um, preferably 14 for does and 16 for books. Healthy rat. A good diet and a clean cage as well as regular veterinary checkups check will help your rat stay healthy but there are a few things to keep an eye out for. Dental care. Like rodents, rats teeth keep on glowing so keep wooden gnawing toys, blocks and mineral stones in their cage at all times to prevent problems. Check their teeth regularly and if anything is wrong see your vet. Um, rats don't need to chew on things to keep their teeth down. They actually do this thing called bruxing where they grind their teeth together and sometimes this causes their eyes to pop out which is called boggling. Rats should be able to file their teeth down on their own. They just like to chew because they like to chew. Health worries. Rats aren't as tough as you may think and need lots of care. Watch out for sneezing, a dull spiked coat, wool patches, dry or irritated skin, and lethargy. Changes in eating or drinking or behavior can also be a sign that rats are poorly. You, need to, you may see red flecks around the nose and eyes. This isn't blood, but porphyrin, a sign they're stressed. If you spot any of these symptoms, see your vet. So porphyrin is natural and normal. It's just sort of like rat snot and it's dyed red and if you see a little bit around their nose and the eyes especially just after waking up it's not worrisome if you see it see it consistently and they're not keeping on top of cleaning it then it's a problem i've seen a lot of people be very worried with a little tiny bit of porphyrin around their rat's nose and that's not generally something to worry about unless there's you know other symptoms or it's excessive porphyrin on the move traveling is stressful for rats but if you have to go to the vet take them in their cage or plastic carrier box to calm them, move rats in pairs or groups together and pop some familiar bedding in there too. So one thing, rats are very good travellers. If you're going on like the tube that can be very noisy and that can be stressful. However, in cars, on trains in general, rats are perfectly fine, especially if they have a friend with them. I will always take my rats to the vets in pairs, even if it's only wrong one rat with a problem, just to be safe. But rats really on like bad travelers as people think that they are some rats are better travelers but in most cases they're decent travelers and it's not something that you need to worry about a lot quiet time to avoid causing them unnecessary stress try to avoid waking up a sleeping rat this could frighten them and they may bite that's true they may also find it harder to trust someone who is always disturbing them when they're asleep it's best to handle your rats in the evening when they're naturally awake it is best to handle your rats when they're naturally awake and obviously don't purposely wake up your rats. 
in the evening isn't necessarily true. You'll find your rats have a routine of when they're awake. My boys will have an, a wake-up period around 7 to 9 a.m. Then they'll have a wake-up period around 1 to 3 p.m. Then they'll have a wake-up period around 7, like 5, 7-ish, 9-ish. And then they'll have a wake-up period around 12, midnight, 1 a.m. Um, and they sleep in cycles like that. And it's obviously not exact every day but that's sort of the average and so we will mostly interact with our rats at those times health boosters some rat owners use pro probiotic supplements to relieve stress and aid healthy digestion you may wish to use them when you first set your rat home as this can be particularly stressful always keep a close eye on your rats without disturbing them to ensure they're behaving normally and have everything they need fine i guess but no talk about actual supplements in the diet i mentioned i i noticed no actual talk of supplements what are you doing Esther? in their diet um that could actually be helpful though health and hygiene all pets can carry diseases some of which can pass to people always clean your hands with soap and water after handling or feeding your pets or cleaning their home and equipment and ensure children do the same always supervise children to ensure they do not put pets or objects that the pets have been in contact with near their mouths, it's best to avoid kissing your pet. Who's actually going to do that? Children under five, pregnant women and elderly people, elderly people and people with a weakened immune system should pay extra attention to how human feeding, handling and cleaning out pets, their housing and accessories. Do not clean pet equipment with your normal washing up. If you're ever bitten by a small animal, the bat wound should be promptly cleaned with dis and disinfected before being covered by a waterproof dressing. Seek medical advice if you feel unwell following the bite. This is very important. And if you're feeling unwell after a bite, go to the doctor. If not, it's usually not usually anything to worry about. And most rat bites will be pretty minor, like a like a paper cut sort of deal. So it's pretty fine. Our pet health promise. Now this is the dodge bit in my opinion. We promise that if your pet falls ill within six weeks of purchase and your vet believes that a disease was contracted before your purchase, we will cover your vet bill to treat it. How lovely. Why not just have healthy pets? I don't know. Adopting rats. Caring for rats is a big responsibility. If you're thinking already, I've reached their welfare needs and you are committed to caring for them for their whole lives, why not support giving a home to one of our rescue rats and our support adoption for pet centres? RSPC animal centres across England and Wales and other animal charities. Well, at least they're actually suggesting that you go and support rescues instead of them, but you also have the choice of ethical breeders. I have made a video about how to spot an ethical breeder if you're interested. So now the final thing on this is your rat, your happy rat checklist. Large rat cage, rat house for each rat in the cage for sleeping, tubes, tunnels and boxes, suitable bedding, paper based, it doesn't have to be paper based, safe nesting material, e.g. soft shredded paper, hammocks, ceramic food bowl, large water bottle, pets at home nuggets, no 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 no, healthy rat treats, rat sized toys, bottle brush, gnawing toys, pet safe disinfectant. You can also just use white vinegar and water. Rodent playpen, tray for digging and safe suitable digging material for use outside of the cage. Why not put it inside the cage? Time every day for your new friend. A book on rats. Which book on rats? That's so random. And a local vet to register your rats with, which is very, very important that you have a vet who is rat savvy that you are already registered with before you get your pets. Now, this guide isn't terrible. I'll give it that. I've seen and read it in worse iterations, but there's nothing specific in here. It's not telling you the size of the cage that you need, which beddings are safe or unsafe. Absolutely no mention of like safe or not safe beddings in there, I noticed. No details on what a rat's diet needs to entail. Um, instead, just an advertisement for their own nuggets. Yeah, very interesting. Not wholly bad, but fun to read nevertheless. I hoped that you enjoyed it, this video. I will say that very excitingly, I have published my website. So this is something I'm very excited about. Um, last week, I decided to make myself a website and on there I have information and like little updates about my boys. I have a little blog on there as well um, on the section called rat 
keeping articles and on there I will be posting like rack hair articles, like my experiences like with vet visits and my experiences at shows, show results, um, lots of different things like that to make a very exciting website and in the future, which I'm planning to do, future I am planning to have my own breeding program. So there's a few little FAQs about my future breeding plans there if you're interested to see. It won't be happening for a very long time until I feel more financially secure and stable because there are a lot more responsibilities when it comes to having that many rats but also having pregnant does and um, all the other health risks that can come with that. So I don't feel comfortable breeding right now but in the future it's something that I really would like to do. Um, so I have sort of spoke a little bit about that on my website. Um, so I'd be very grateful if you go and check out my website. It is just faithfulbaratos.co.uk. I'm very excited about it. So please do visit that website um, and check back periodically because I will be adding like things on my blog. So if you aren't already following me on Instagram, do follow me on Instagram, faithfulratos. If you aren't already subscribed, please do subscribe, like and comment down below any of your reactions to this wonderful thing. And yeah, thanks very much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!